What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to discuss a sample problem involving the induced dipole moment in an atom due to an external electric field. The problem reads, according to quantum mechanics, the electron, uh, the electron cloud for an hydrogen atom in the ground state has a charge density equal to this equation where Q is the charge of the electron and A is called the Bohr radius. So the question is, find the atomic polarizability of such an atom. So in this case, we got, we're given with a hint. So the first thing that we need to do is to calculate the electric field of the electron cloud and then expand the exponential, assuming that the uh, R or the distance R is much smaller than the Bohr radius. Okay. So, uh, we remember that the uh, atomic polarizability can be determined by getting the relationship between the induced dipole moment in an atom due to the presence of an electric field. We know that these two are directly proportional. As long as the electric field is not too strong, the induced dipole moment is directly proportional to the electric field and the proportionality constant is the atomic polarizability okay so the goal here is to get an expression that will follow this form and the constant or the coefficient in that equation will be our atomic polarizability okay so one of the things that we can do is we express the electric field in terms of the polarizability and the induced dipole moment, which is equal to uh, 1 over alpha times the polarization, uh, the uh, induced dipole moment. Okay, so with this, we need to calculate the electric field. Okay, now, so for example, if this is your electron cloud, okay, and the electron cloud has a Bohr radius equal to a so the electric field inside of the electron cloud will be determined using gauss law okay so again this is your electron cloud and at the center is where your nucleus and your proton and your nucleus is found okay so if you're going to look at distances or regions inside the atom so that means we're going to look for the electric field inside this electron cloud okay so we know that the electron cloud has this charge density okay so by gauss law so by gauss law We're in the closing integral of E dot dA is equal to Q and close over epsilon sub zero. Okay, so first let's compute for the Q and close. Okay, so Q and close. Uh, where do you want to? Okay, right here. Q and close. is equal to the integral of rho theta where rho is this one q pi and alpha are, the, are equal so we can take that out of the integral so we have a q over pi a cube times the integral of e to the negative 2r over a times d tau which is in spherical coordinate system that's r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi which is calculated as follows so this is q over uh, sorry pi a cube times integral of e r squared e to the 
negative 2r over a dr evaluated from 0 to r so this is 0 to r times integral of sine theta d theta from 0 to 2 pi I'm sorry, 0 to pi and integral of d phi from 0 to 2 pi so we already know that the last two integrals in this uh, form is equal to 4 pi okay so this becomes 4 pi q over pi a cube or just 4 q over a cube so the next problem would be this integral so this integral is actually equal to uh, you can you can you can solve it yourselves which is very easy and this q enclosed is actually equal to q times 1 minus e to the negative 2r over a times 1 plus 2 over a plus 2 r squared over a squared okay now we already said that for so that means okay this gauss law will now be equal to so this becomes e times 4 pi r squared equals q enclosed which is this one divided by epsilon sub zero which tells us that the magnitude of the electric field is equal to 1 over 3 4 pi uh, epsilon naught times q over r squared and then times this whole factor and that's 1 minus e to the negative 2 r over a times 1 plus 2 r over a plus 2 r squared over a squared so again this form is actually uh, related to this okay so it's up to you how to derive from this point to this point the point the important thing here is this is your electric field okay now because of the presence of the electric field okay so let's say this is the presence of the electric field okay that means uh, the proton inside will actually shift by d okay so from r the proton will shift in this direction and this becomes your plus and then this cloud the cloud will move on the other side okay in this direction at the distance from the center to this point where the proton will move is d okay and that means we're looking for the electric field at d so it means we're going to replace r with d so here uh, r will be equal to d 
Okay, so copying this, we have E equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon times Q over R squared. So this becomes T squared. Right? And then times 1 minus e to the negative 2 r over a and so 1 plus 2 r over a plus 2 uh, r uh, so this is d sorry this is d and then this is d squared over a squared <coughs> okay so at this juncture we're going to evaluate this exponential factor okay so by getting the uh, the infinite series for the exponential function e to the negative 2 d over a this is equal to 1 plus um, 2 d over a plus 1 over 2 factorial times 2d over a squared plus uh, 1 over 3 factorial times 2d over a minus cube this is minus etc which is equal to 1 minus um, 2d over a plus 2 d over a squared minus uh, 4 thirds d over a cube etc. Okay. Uh, so that means if you're going to therefore if you're going to substitute this term this term this this uh, this, pol this polynomial or this factor here and then we multiply it with this one and then this becomes uh, this factor let's call this factor let's say factor um, beta so e to the negative 2d over a times beta will actually give us um, 1 minus 4 thirds d over a cube plus some higher order terms. Okay, so the, uh, the evaluation of this. Uh, I will just leave it to you. It's a simple algebra. So there will be uh, terms that will be cancelled each other. And then we'll end up with this expression. Okay? So because, uh, as you mentioned earlier, that R is much, much less than A. Okay? So that's D is much, much less than A. So those higher order will actually be neglected. Okay, so therefore, the electric field the electric field can now be written as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times Q over D squared times 1 minus this. So that's plus. So this is times 4 thirds d cube over a cube. Okay, so this is just an approximate. Okay, rearranging this, rearranging this we have so 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times 4. Uh, 
thirds a cube oh, so 4 over 3 a cube t squared will cancel with this one so that's uh, q times t so 4 will also cancel so this is equal to uh, 1 over 3 pi epsilon a cube times qd which is the magnitude of p and we know for a fact that whatever the direction of the electric field that's the direction of your dipole moment so now we see a pattern like this so we remember again that e is equal to 1 over alpha times p so therefore the atomic polarizability is now equal to 3 pi epsilon naught a cube where a is the Bohr radius recall okay see so remember that uh, for example 4.1 a, the atomic polarizability for a uniform sphere model okay, is of this form alpha equals 4 pi epsilon a cube okay so that's this simple model is actually a close approximation if we're going to use the uh, electron cloud density that is derived from quantum mechanics where A is the Bohr radius okay so that means we're going to uh, we were able to calculate the atomic polarizability for this experiment for this example Okay, so I hope you learned something here. Uh, this ends the discussion on problem 4.2. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.